Hi, welcome to the EEV blog, an electronics engineering video blog of interest to anyone involved in electronics design. I'm your host, Dave Jones. Hi, it's product review time again, but I've got something a little bit different for you today. I've got the brand spanking new, just released Amazon Kindle ebook reader. This is the third generation, the Kindle 3, 6 inch device. Let's check it out. Now, I'd just like to say up front that this is the first time I've actually owned and used an ebook reader. It's the first time I've used the Kindle. I haven't used the previous version, so I don't know how it compares, but uh, I thought I'd share my experiences with it as a first time user. Let's take a look. Now, the reason I haven't thought about getting an ebook reader before is because, well, they're a bit niche. They were very expensive, you know, three, four hundred dollars plus, something like that. And, well, they didn't have a spectacular battery life, I thought, but then this new this new Generation 3 Kindle, the, or the Kindle 3, it's not actually called the Kindle 3, but I think that's what everyone's going to be calling it. The Kindle 3, uh, they advertised it, Amazon advertised it for 139 US dollars for this new model for Wi-Fi only, or 189 dollars for the uh, Wi-Fi plus 3G GSM model. And at that price, it was too good to pass up. But the other thing which really sold me on this was the fact that it had a one month claim battery life. Oh, one month. Awesome. That's what I'm talking about when you want a product like an ebook reader. Now, as you might know, I'm not normally a fan of unboxings, so I'm not going to do the ta da unboxing, but I thought the box was worth mentioning. This is the box that it was actually shipped in. There was no outer box at all, um, and they actually claim um, certified frustration free packaging. There it is, assembled in China, of course. Well, what do you expect? But, uh, but I thought this was really neat. There was no wasted packaging at all. Ship directly DHL. It's got one rip, uh, you know, one of those rip tags along there, and you open it up, and ta da! There's your Kindle! Oh, look at it! And the amazing thing is, you open the box, and the screen is already on because it uses an e ink display which draws no power. You know, I, this is the first time I've ever seen this e ink display, and I've got to tell you, I am absolutely gobsmacked i'm blown away it's just that incredible you think it's got one of those you know fake uh screen um things which you get on prop you know which you get on actual products and you peel it off you know like that but it's not that's the actual that's the actual display and what else you get in there um you get a uh, recycled um it looks like it's a, it uses recycled looks like it all uses recycled materials you get a starter guide and you get as a micro um a micro usb cable with it and that allows you to do pc connection and charging as well but that's all you get beautiful simplistic packaging i love it Okay, now let's take a look at the unit uh, overall. This is the six inch model. It also comes in a, D a nine inch DX model. And if you compare it with a standard, uh, standard size paperback novel here, this is George Smoot's Wrinkles in Time. It's, it's not, you know, it's pretty on par with the size of that, but obviously much, much thinner. Now, it feels like a, a really, geez, really well-designed, good quality unit. I'm having a hard time bending that. I'm sure I could if I uh, tried, but um, yeah, it feels really solid. It's got a nice um, sort of like a almost a rubber feel back on it, and that stops it that stops it sliding around too much, which is which is actually quite a nice design aspect. It feels really high quality and quite rugged, and the screen um, feels like it's fairly well fairly well protected. I'm not sure what the actual covering is on that, but you can get the feel that you can just grab it like that and toss it around and you're not really going to have any problems. I'm not going to try and figure out where the stress point is on the screen and damage it, but you can certainly give it a few bangs and it's no problem at all. Now, let's check out the keyboard down here. It's got a QWERTY keyboard. Um, now, I'm not a big fan of these cursor keys. This is one of my gripes with the unit. If you um, press these cursor buttons with your thumb, I find that I I tend to hit that center enter button, um, that center select button, quite often. But uh, if I use my fingers, it's not a problem. 
um, generally, but yeah, I've hit that center one a few times accidentally. Really a bit annoying, but um, yeah, you take the good with the bad. Apart from that, the keyboard's not too bad. I find it quite well laid out, and it works well. Now, to flip uh, page forward and page back, they've got two buttons here and two buttons here. Now, as you can see, the larger one is page forward, because they've put a bit of thought into it, and they thought, well, most people want to uh, go forward through a book, so we'll make that uh, key bigger than the back button. And, and they've got duplicate ones left and right-handed, so it doesn't actually discriminate. But um, I'm still trying to train myself to use it. I still kind of start, my mind just thinks, well, this one's forward and this one over here is back. So I've got to train myself to think it's one-handed operation only, forward, back, like that. So it's a bit confusing, but um, I guess that comes through training. Now let's take a look at the end on it here. Now we've got volume control here, plus minus, standard 3.5 millimeter um, audio headphone jack. There's a microphone port right there, which doesn't work on this model, but um, I guess any apps in the future can use a microphone. It's got a micro AB uh, USB connector. I was a bit disappointed by that. I was expecting a mini B. Um, I don't particularly like the AB that much, although it is more reliable, it's designed for higher insertions, and it's the latest technology, so at least it's standard, that's good. And the slide power switch here I really like, because check out the nice diffuse LED, it's not very bright, green, and it lights up on both sides, green tells you that the power is good, and orange during charging and things like that. And on the back here, um, we've got uh, these uh, dual speakers here, and they're actually quite high quality. I'm actually surprised at the quality of the sound I'm getting out of this. We'll test that later, but overall, it's a really nice unit. There's Mark Twain on the front. It's actually turned off. You see, it says uh, slide and release the power switch to wake. Um, that's what you can do with this e-ink display, and that, that image changes about once every 10 minutes or something like that. I'm not sure if you can customise it, but it goes through a whole bunch of historical figures, and it's really quite nice. So that's the 6-inch Kindle in a nutshell. And um, on the back here are the speakers. The speakers are actually work very well. I'm quite surprised at the quality um, of the audio that comes out. Two mysterious-looking uh, holes on the side here. They're not on the other side, they're only on the left-hand side, and I don't know what they are. I haven't sort of figured it out yet, and I haven't read anything about it, but uh, obviously they're for something. And, of course, the big thing is, how much does it weigh? Well, here you go, 234 grams. Let's compare it with the same size paperback novel, pretty typical. 310, there you go, it weighs less than George Smoot's Wrinkles in Time. Okay, now let's uh, switch the unit on here. You just slide the power switch like that, and bingo, it automatically defaults to where you left off, which is really quite nice. And you get a welcome message when you open the box. The uh, Kindle is already, um, if you buy it through Amazon, it's already registered in your account name. So, you know, dear David, it already knows who I am, and it's already registered. Now, the main button down here is the home button, and that will take you to list all of the books you've put in there. I've put some in, there's categories and all sorts of things. Um, there's, uh, it shows the battery gauge up here is really quite uh, nice, and it shows the status of the Wi-Fi. Um, in this case, all the Wi-Fi and the GSM is turned off, and this is the name of my Kindle. I've changed it, it was David's Kindle, but I changed it to EEV blog, and uh, I'll try and give you some idea of the quality of the display. Now, it really is quite difficult to get a good close-up of just how magnificently rendered this display is. Um, I'm, I'm under fluoro lights here in the lab, so it's not the best, but it does have a true 180-degree uh, spherical field of view. And it's just, it's just remarkable. It's absolutely incredible to look at. It is really just like uh, paper. It's a nice sort of matte, sort of white. It's, it's not quite, it's, it's not a bright white background, but it, it's lovely to look at, lovely to read, easy on the eyes. It's just, it really is incredible, and you really cannot see the pixels in there. Um, it's just amazing. It's got 16 shades of grey, uh, but that is plenty for um, images and things like that. Very nice, high-quality display. And if you turn the page, 
you can see it go black for half a second. So that's um, that's the e-ink display actually refreshing the whole thing. But you can go through reasonably quickly. It doesn't really slow you down. Um, the uh, page forward and page back really is quite nice. I like it. Now, in normal use, it's quoted as a one month battery life if you turn the uh, Wi-Fi and the 3G GSM off, but that's easy from virtually anywhere. You just hit the menu button, doesn't matter where you are, and there's a turn wireless um, on. Well, in this case, it's turn it on, and you switch it on, and uh, bingo, there it is. It's actually on. Now it's got, uh, now it's got the wireless uh, signal up there. It hasn't actually, there it is, it's got the Wi-Fi, so that's how long it took to actually uh, lock into the Wi-Fi, but you can just switch it off and that will get you your one month battery life. If you have Wi-Fi switched on, you'll get about three weeks, which is still very impressive. And you'll also note it does actually have a clock as well, which is really nice. If you're in bed reading or you're somewhere else, it's good to have a clock there pop up on the menu. Now, one fantastic thing about this, if you don't like the size or the uh, density of the text used in your particular ebook, you just press the alpha um, button down here. I'm going to call it the alpha button. I don't know what it's actually called. And you can actually scroll through, use the cursor keys and scroll through different size fonts and it changes it in real time. Look at that. Unbelievable. That's, that's really quite nice. And then you can actually change the typeface from regular to condensed and uh, sans serif. There you go. It, and you can actually tailor it to, uh, to suit your particular requirements. Line spacing, small, medium, large. Quite nice. So you can fit as little or as much uh, words uh, per line and it updates that in real time, which is really quite neat. I'm not sure why you would want uh, to waste all that space there, but hey, you know, if, if you want to, no problem at all. Um, and it's also got text-to-speech, which we'll go into, but one of the features I really love is the screen rotation. You can just select that and bingo, the screen is now reads like that. Fantastic, I love it. And you can hold it like that or like that, and it's actually I quite like this orientation because it's um, as you read down, you press that button down there and it makes sense to sort of go down, but that one unfortunately doesn't take you back up but as before. But yeah, that's, you know, it's just really quite nice and quite usable in this um, landscape format. I love it. And in the landscape mode, everything switches around as well. So if you call up the menu, there it is. It actually reformats the menu to fit in that orientation and it rotates the cursor keys as well. Beautiful. Now because you can actually uh, format the text on this thing any way you want, pages become a bit redundant with these things. So instead of page numbers, you've got a percentage bar down here of how much you've actually read and these locations, what are called locations, there's 13,247 of them in this Harry Potter book, which seems a bit crazy, but you sort of get used to it and it does allow you to bookmark to a specific location and um, share locations between different people regardless of what size font you have, what formatting, what orientation and all that sort of stuff. So I guess there's method in the madness there. Now let's try the new experimental uh, text-to-speech function which can read your book for you. I don't think it's going to do that well on Harry Potter, um, but let's give it a go. You hit the alpha button down here. There is a hotkey to uh, turn this on as well, but let's go down to text-to-speech and turn it on. It takes a few seconds. Nope. There we go. Pepper and voice rising together. It wasn't me. It was a couple of dementors, a couple of what's this can't swallow dementors, said Harry slowly and clearly. Two of them, and what the ruddy hell are dementors, they guard the wizard prison, Escaban, said in Petunia. So there you go, and if you press the alpha button again, um, you can actually turn, you can set the uh, speech rate and the speaking voice. Let's try a female one, shall we? Harry's brain reeled. Mrs. Fig was one thing, but in Petunia? How do you know that he asked her, astonished? Aunt Petunia looked quite appalled with herself. She glanced at Uncle Vernon in fearful apology. And the good thing is, is you can switch it off. Tea. And it still reads to you. And the good thing is, is that uh, that works for audio, the text-to-speech, the audio books, and the MP3 player as well. You can switch it off. 
Harry was and it still keeps reading. Beauty. Switch it back on and it still goes. She usually put all her energies into pretending it didn't exist. There you go. It doesn't Uncle skip Vernon a beat. I love it. And because the display stays on when you switch it off, it's it really takes some getting used to. It's a bit unusual. You think, oh, you turn it on and the screen's lit up. Oh, it's still turned on, but it's not. So it's just something to watch out for. It does have an auto turn off feature though, which is great. Okay, one of the new features of the Amazon Kindle is the new web browser. Now, let's check it out. Let's go into menu from the home screen, and this is one of my gripes. Look, you go down, it's in, it's under, instead of being on the main menu here, okay, you think the web browser would be a main feature, it's not. You've got to go down to experimental menu down here. Why? That's just nuts. And look, have a read of what they've got here. We are working on these experimental prototypes. Do you find them useful? Should we continue working on them? We would love to hear what you think. So please send your comments to Kindle feedback at Amazon.com. Well, bloody hell, Kindle, of course we want a web browser, an MP3 player, and text to speech on our ebook. God, that's a given. God, just put them as main applications on the main screen. I don't get it. Ah, unbelievable. Anyway, let's go into the launch browser and um, let's reload. I've already had the Amazon. Uh, Dot com site up here, but I'm using a Wi-Fi connection as you can see um, not too many bars It's uh, I'm out here in the lab a long way from my um, access point, but as you can see it renders pages beautifully Now I've disabled uh, the Wi-Fi connection. And I'm using the 3G connection as you can see now I can still surf um, it looks like any website um by default. I set the bookmark. It's Google Island why? I have no idea. I'm not in Ireland. Anyway, I'm going to check out the ampower.com, small plug there, which is my radio show. And I'm going to load that up and let's give it a go. It's going to take us to it. There's the progress bar. Got a 3G connection. I've preloaded this page, so it's a little bit quicker um, than, than before. It, it looks like it has actually cached it. But as you can see, I can still, I'm not using my Wi-Fi connection. It's the free 3G connection through Amazon. Um, through yeah, I, so I don't know how much bandwidth you get if there's a limit per month or whatever, but it looks like you can surf no problems at all. Any website, beauty. Now there is one thing with the browser; it's not completely flexible. It doesn't let you play uh, pop-up. So if I highlight and select a link here, which uh, tries to play an MP3. Uh, um, on my Ampower website, it says web browser could not open this link because opening multiple windows is not supported. So there you go. But still, as a basic browser, it actually works quite well. And one of the great things about the Kindle is that it reads standard PDF documents as well. You just uh, hook it up the computer, drag and drop them into the documents directory. And look, it shows up a little PDF there, a little PDF next to the document. And this one's the art of electronics. And I'm going to go into it and... It's, it's a PDF of the book, The Art of Electronics, and as you can see, it reads the, um, it's got, you know, a th it's a huge, it's a massive book. It's over a thousand pages, and, uh, and there it is, the complete um, uh, PDF document. But you can view uh, data sheets or any, any PDF you like. One of the other experimental features of the Kindle is the MP3 player. And um, if you go to the experimental page, here it is. It tells you uh, play MP3s and uh, you can select it from here or you can simply hit the hotkey from anywhere. You can still be reading a book. You just hit alt spacebar and and the audio quality is quite good, but the problem is the only controls you've got, there's no media player. Um, you, you can't see what files are on there, you can't select albums, you can't do anything. All you can do is press Alt Space Bar to start and stop, and um, F to switch to the next song. And it's just, it's crazy. You, you just can't do anything. But, hey, at least it sounds good and it does uh, play well. And if you're wondering how long it actually um, uh, lasts, the battery, I've done a test on it and it lasts 24 hours continuous playing um, on a fully charged battery playing continuous into a set of headphones. There you go. So I've done the test and that's what it does. And it also plays when you switch it off. No problems at all. So you can switch it off 
on and uh, you can be scrolling through documents, reading books and at the same time listening to your um, listening to your music. Fantastic. Okay, so let's actually download a book from the Amazon store. Now, let's go into the menu and we'll go shopping Kindle store. There we go. I'm using the 3G connection. For some reason, it's flipped it back around like this. I'm not sure to portrait orientation. Not sure why. Anyway, 3G connection. Let's go into books here. And uh, let's. And it says you can just start typing to type a search. So I'm going to do something here. Uh, let's go for a good book. Uh, the God Delusion. There we go, enter, and let's give it a go. It's wirelessly connecting. It's 3G, I've disabled the Wi-Fi. It'd probably be a bit quicker if we had uh, Wi-Fi. So it's slowly getting there. There it is. There it is, The God Delusion by Richard Dawkins. Let's go in there and select that. And it gives you, um, if it can't find it, it gives you alternatives and things like that. But uh, we'll go in there. It gives you this little scrolly icon up here like that. So it looks like it's taken its time with the old 3G connection, but there it is. And you can just buy it, um, or, and it tells you the list price, there it is. Uh, but it's got try a sample, so let's try a sample, and click OK. And once again, it's thinking, thinking, thinking. Da -da -da. And we are currently sending your free sample and it automatically appear on your home screen when the download is complete. Well, it should pop up here with a message when it's actually complete. And eventually, it's taking its time. But it does that in background. You can actually go, oh, there it is, items downloaded. There you go. So you just press the home button down here and bingo. It's, look. It's popped up, there it is, the God Delusion, and it tells you it's a sample. There you go, so we'll go in there and we'll highlight that, and we have our book. Fantastic, there it is. Ta-da, that's how simple it is to um, download a book from the Kindle store. Okay, let's plug it into the PC and see what we get, the micro USB connector, and We'll plug it in and bingo, there it is. If you want to uh, read or shop on your Kindle while continuing to charge, uh, please keep it attached but eject the Kindle from your computer. So as you can see, it's um, now orange, showing orange, that's charging, but you can't do anything. You can't switch it on or off. You can't do a thing. Now it says if we want to um, continue to use it while it's charging on the PC, then we eject it. So let's go down here to the eject, safely remove. And there it is, eject Amazon Kindle. And we hit that, and nothing. Wah, epic fail. Oh, I mean, there's something seriously wrong with that. It's screwed. What a heap of crap. Um, now, it works on my XP machine, but Windows 7 here doesn't, um, it looks like it doesn't work at all. There's definitely something buggy with Windows 7 there. Either that or I'm not ejecting it, right? I don't know, but yeah go figure now as you can see once it's um open you can actually access the drive no problems at all and you can see the documents which are all in there like that and uh you can just drag and drop your pdf documents into documents you can drag and drop your mp3s into music um you can do them uh, based on subdirectories but as i said you can't select them um and uh audible i've got um audio books in there as well. I've got MP3 audiobooks and they play just fine. I mentioned audiobooks and I've actually um, I've actually created, these categories don't come up uh, by standard, I've actually created a category and put my audiobooks in there. I won't show you that but it's easy to do and you go into audiobooks and let's see that work. I've got The Last Man on the Moon, let's give that a try. By Eugene Cernan, an excellent audiobook spoken by Eugene Cernan himself and it's got play down here and there it is. I really didn't know him during our early years as naval aviators. But when we were both among the 14 astronauts announced in 1963, our lives became linked. When all else fails, I don't fail alphabetically. Cernan, then Chaffee. 
Excellent. It works quite well. The audio book player, and as as with everything else, switch it off. And it continues to play. Excellent. And you can go read PDFs or anything else or books while you're listening to your audio book. Excellent. Now, while the screen is absolutely phenomenal, indoors works brilliantly, outdoors it works brilliantly, there's no glare, but how does it, uh, you know, how good is it to read in bed at night while your partner's sleeping next to you? Well, I've got my little mighty bright um, uh, light and I'm going to give it a try. Okay, so let's give the light a go, shall we? I'll switch the lights off and, whoa, it's, it's really hard to show up here. It's going to take some time to adjust, but tr trust me, that is very, uh, that is quite readable. But the problem is, is the bright spot in the middle here. And if you put the light in the middle, as you traditionally, as, as I do for my paper book, it's just no good. You've really got to put it off to one side like that and sort of um, have it like that and light up the text. It's a bit, trust me, I can read that actually quite well. So it does work. And there you go. If I do the same thing with the book, as you can see, you don't get that bright reflective spot in the middle, of course. Um, you you know, it's nice and diffused and not a problem with the paper, but the uh, e-ink display is a bit reflective, but still, if you put it to one side, it, it still works fairly well. Now, as for technical specs, well, it's got a Freescale ARM processor in it, uh, which you could probably repurpose. Anyone wants to... Uh, uh, do some hacking on the thing, although the manual says you're not allowed to. <coughs> Screw that. Hack away, guys. Um, and uh, it's um, there's going to be apps for it as well. Uh, Amazon have released an SDK as well. Um, so that, you know, so look out for um, Kindle apps. But it's got uh, four gig of memory. Uh, where only three gig is usable. Not that great. It's got an 800 by 600 screen, which is about 150 or 160 pixels per inch but it looks oh it's pornographic it 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 really is pornographic it's phenomenal um the screen is just absolutely amazing but yeah uh technical specs wise it's pretty good it's got a lithium ion battery i think it's about 1700 milliamp hour capacity um but yeah a one month battery life is the real killer even if you turn wi-fi on it's still three weeks battery life um i think that drops down to about a week if it's gsm as well or something like that but god phenomenal and the specs say it's got an operational range of 0 to 35 degrees Celsius. Well, I've got my thermal chamber here. Let's try it out. Okay, first up here we need a baseline of the display and how well it operates. So I've got a book here, load it up, and let's check it out. It's not bad at all. This is um, about 17 degrees Celsius here in the lab. So we will um, uh, whack it in the thermal oven, take it down to... Uh, as close to zero degrees as we can get it and see if the update uh, rate or the uh, the refresh rate of the uh, screen is affected by temperature. Let's give it a go. Okay, I've set it for two degrees Celsius. I'm going to whack it in the thermal oven and uh, leave it for a while, soak down to temperature and let's see if it still survives. Okay, it's been in there for a while. It's soaked down to about three degrees Celsius and let's check it out. Woohoo! Nice and chilly. Here we go. Switch on. Still working. Oi, that seems a bit slow. Oh, check it out. I think that's slower. I think that's definitely slower. Okay, here we go. This is the book after two degrees Celsius. I think that's pretty, I think that's a bit slower. Okay, it's up to 35 degrees now. It's had time to soak, and let's try it out. Here we go. Is that faster? Yeah, it seems. I think it seems quicker than before. We'll just do a close-up of the 35 degrees Celsius. Certainly quicker. Now the Kindle comes standard with uh, four gigabytes of memory, which 
sounds well doesn't sound like much these days and it's it's actually quite a lot if you're just doing ebooks but once you start putting audio books and mp3s on there it really chews up the space because and pdfs and stuff like that and audio um a regular amazon book might be a hundred kilobytes or something like that or a couple hundred kilobytes so you can fit you know a lifetime's worth of books on here but yeah uh, music uh, mp3s and stuff like that audio books really chew up your four gig gigabytes real quick and it really is lacking an sd card slot how hard would it be to put in a micro sd card they've left it out deliberately and they've i you know I could guess at the reasons for them leaving it deliberately out. Um, that's Amazon. By the way, this is designed by a company called uh, Lab126. Lab126.com. They're in uh, California. And um, and I don't think they're owned by Kindle, but they're the ones who actually uh, designed this thing. And they've done an awesome job. So my hat's off to uh, Lab126 and Amazon. It's a real killer product. I love it. Uh, but, you know, there's a few little gripes I don't like about it, but... Oh, the e-ink display is nothing short of pornographic. It really is. It's just techno porn. Porn for engineers and geeks. Oh, it's just phenomenal. 800 by 600 display and oh, it just looks like real paper. Oh, I'm just, I'm gobsmacked. I really am. I highly recommend you pick one up. The Amazon Kindle. Beauty.